Disney's latest Legacy lightsaber is the limited edition Cal Kestis Dual Saber box set. How does it compare to previous versions of Cal Sabers and to the other box sets? Let's take a look. If you're not familiar with Cal Kestis, he's the main character from the much-loved Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor video games. In Jedi Fallen Order, he inherits a shrouded emitter saber from his Jedi Master, Jaro Tapal. Later, he combines it with another hilt from Sarah Junda to make the repaired saber staff we see in this box set. The wood box it comes in is beautiful, but enormous, at almost two and a half feet long and 15 pounds, even larger when it's still in the original shipping container. That's almost a foot longer than the Ahsoka box set. It's very similar to the Jedi Temple Guard box set from 2021 in a pine wood box with a slide off lid. This isn't just a repurposed wine box. The quality of this box is very, very nice. The box art is also gorgeous with this beautiful Jedi Order symbol in the middle and an almost world between worlds kind of design on it. On both sides in Arabesh, you see Jaro Tapal saying, trust only in the force. The first thing you see when you open it up is this thin piece of foam with your limited edition number card attached to the front of it. This is a much less fancy way of presenting uh, the limited edition number. In the Ahsoka box set and a lot of the other ones that have come out recently, the number plate is affixed to the inside of the crate where it looks beautiful on display and is more a part of the case than just something that's included inside of it. Remove that and we see the hilt itself, which is just gorgeous. When you pick it up for the first time, the first thing you're gonna notice is the weight. Now, all of Disney's legacy lightsabers are heavy, but this thing is just a beast. For comparison, it's about 25% heavier than a Savvy Saber. But wow, is it pretty. As usual, ignore all the stickers. You can peel those right off. The Jaro to Paul side is very similar to the previous releases, with those split emitter shrouds and the majority of the hilt here. The difference comes when you get down to the handle, which we'll talk about in a second. The Sarah Junda side has that flared emitter and almost centurion kind of design. It's really thick, but still very beautiful. The faux leather wrap on the hilt spans all three sections. It's on that side, the coupler goes from here to here, and then it's on the Sarah Junda side as well. It's made of sort of a soft rubbery material that makes for a really great grip, and then it has puncture holes in it to let the sound get out. It makes for a really nice, comfortable way to, to handle the saber. One drawback though is that with those sound vents right in the middle of the grip, when you have your hand around it, it can mute the sound. With it uncovered, the sound is nice and loud. But once you wrap your hand around there, it mutes it down quite a bit. It would have been nice if they had put the sound venting up at the top and the bottom of the grip instead of right in the middle where you're supposed to grab it. So as a full saber staff, it's really heavy, but just gorgeous. But what happens when you want to split it into two separate sabers? like you can in the game. In the gray box version and the video game exclusive version of Cal Saber, it comes with both a single hill pommel and a coupler that will let you connect two of them together as a staff. That way you can switch between staff and dual wielding anytime you want. The same was true for the Jedi Temple Guard box set, which is the most similar box set to this one. That one came with a pommel for each hilt and two separate couplers, one folding, one fixed. But for some bizarre reason, this box set only comes with what you see here. You have both sides of the hilt, a separate chassis that goes inside each side, and then the coupler that will connect them. But there's only one coupler, so if you have it on one side, the other side is left with the chassis falling out the bottom. There's no separate pommel to go on when it's not a staff. This is a really disappointing decision to see Disney make, especially since at $400, this box set is more expensive than the Jedi Temple Guard set that came with two pommels and two separate couplers in an almost identical box. Now it's only a matter of time before the crafty folks over on Etsy start selling separate 3D printed pommels to solve this problem. In fact, Rocky Mountain 3D Print tells me he's working on creating a version of his quick release coupler that's compatible with this box set. And I'll definitely do a review on that as soon as it's available. But we shouldn't have to resort to third party solutions for this. That's easily the most disappointing aspect of the set. The other slightly odd thing about the set is that the cover tech wheel that acts as your belt clip is on the Jarl Topal side of the hilt. Even though in the game you see him attach the Saragenda side to his belt with a Jarl Topal side hanging down. I assume this is just because they had the cover tech included on the previous versions of the Cal hilt and wanted to save money by keeping the design consistent. Okay, let's move on to the flashy bits. This box set doesn't come with any blades, so you have to buy those separately. It uses the same blades as the rest of the Legacy and Savvy's lightsabers, which you can buy in the parks for $50 to $55. They're hard to find outside the parks without a reseller's markup. 
Normally a 30 inch blade is what you'd want for indoor use or 36 inches if you're taller or want it to be a little bit more screen accurate. But for a saber staff like this with a two foot hilt, the 26 inch one is probably what you'd want for saber staff mode. Even then with a 26 inch blade on either side and a two foot hilt, you're looking at a staff that's over six feet long. With a 36 inch one, that would be an eight foot staff. Very unwieldy. Each side of the hilt has one of these plastic dust caps in it. So you want to remove that on both sides. And then you can take the blade, which has the same little nubs on the side that we see in all the other legacy lightsabers. Line it up to the holes in the saber, push it in and twist to connect it. Now the only thing I, I really don't like about this is sometimes the friction inside here to connect it is a little bit more than the friction that's holding this. So you saw when I twisted the blade, rather than the blade connecting, it actually undid uh, the pommel. So sometimes you have to hold it, instead of holding it down on the grip, you have to hold it up on the pommel. But you put it in, you push down and turn, and you're good to go. Then you do the same thing on the opposite side. In, turn, and locked. The controls to turn it on are slightly different on either side. On the Jar to Paul side, this switch here slides up to turn it on and down to turn it off. On the Sarah June side, it's this whole plate here that, turn, that slides up to turn it on and down to turn it off. By default, both sides are blue. And for most legacy lightsabers, that's where the functionality would end. But one of the great features about this one is that you can change the color of the blade to six different colors. So if you flip it over, on the Jaro Topal side, this tiny little button here is the color changing button. And on the Sarajunda side, it's the plate opposite the activation plate. So the one in the back. We'll turn down the lights a minute to show how that works. So with the blade on, you hold down that button for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. It will flash and then go to the next color. So you got the blue, now you're on green. You have to wait for it to finish flashing. If you let go of the button in the middle of the flash, it won't change color and you have to do it again. So for, it goes from blue to green to purple. It's a little bit pinkish, meant to be purple. To red, which looks great in the dark, doesn't hold up so well in daylight. Yellow which as with all the legacies has a little bit of a greenish tint to it. And a white. And then it's right back to blue. The other nice thing about this, if we change that one to green, you'll see that the color can be different on either side. So the controls for that are separate. So you can decide for yourself what color you want to have on either side. If you take it apart and remove the chassis, then that power is lost and then it loses its memory. So when you plug it back in, it will then default back to blue. And like all of Disney's legacy lightsabers, the LEDs that are inside the blade light up in four separate sections. First, the first block, then second, third, and fourth to give it that illusion of expanding and contracting. So you see it go out, and then come back in when it goes down. Some of the more expensive NeoPixel blades have each individual LED in the blade go up in sequence, so it looks like a very smooth expansion and very smooth retraction. Uh, still, for the price that you're getting uh, on, on these, it's still a really good illusion of expanding and contracting. So overall, if you're a big Cal Kestis fan and you're planning on displaying this as a, as a staff, this is a really, really beautiful set and a great buy. And it looks fantastic paired with Disney's new saber stand. If you want to be able to separate it into two hilts, you might want to hold out for a little while until those 3D printed pommels are available. But you should not use this for combat or heavy spinning. There's much more durable options for that. Thanks for tuning in. If you've gotten any value out of this review, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video or subscribe to the channel to tell YouTube's algorithms to show it to more people. I still get the biggest smile every time I see my subscriber count inch up. So send me those serotonin hits. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.